Hi, it's another fantastic fall day in Cota de Casa. In fact, today's Halloween. I want to share with you this tree right here. Beautiful colors here and uh, over here as well. Now, this is a Chinese pistache tree. It is Pistachio chinensis. It's related to the pistachio nut tree, but these don't have any nuts. And they're grown for their uh, ornamental purposes, but mostly for these beautiful fall colors, but also for the perfect shape of these trees. And also they're easy to grow, and the roots are very friendly for sidewalks, planters, and they're not uh, obtrusive to structures. Now this tree is the signature tree for all of the entry points into the homes of these communities. And here we're at the master's collection. And this tree will get uh, 25 to 30 feet tall. It grows nicely from Washington to California and Texas down to Florida. So let's take a closer look. We also have these in Hillsboro. Now these guys, they grow very quickly in full sun. They'll grow about one to two feet per year. They love moderately fertile, well-drained soils. They can withstand heat and drought extremely well. So here's a smaller one I wanted to show you. It's got this perfect dome shape. And the more full sun it gets, the more domier the shape of the tree is. So if it's in the shade, it kind of loses uh, the shape a little bit. And we'll take a look at some of the leaves here. Now this is a deciduous tree. So these leaves, they're green in summer, and then they'll turn in fall, and they'll fall to the ground each year. They are compound pinnate with alternate leaves. So if you see up here, right, it's a pinnate compound. So you have a main stem, our main leaf, and then offshoots, which alternate. So you have one here, one here, one here, one here. And I always just call these uh, substems or sub leaves. And then finally we have these final leaves which alternate briefly, real tightly together up the stem. One here, one here, one here, here. And they're almost opposite, but not quite. And they work themselves to the end, right here. Beautiful colors. So the bark, very silvery, gray. It's a little shreddy, but it has this fantastic pattern of bark to this tree. And the roots are deep roots, so they don't obstruct the nearby sidewalk or this little monument here. And they're great for, like I said, medians and sidewalk areas. Also near your house. It's multi-branched. It's a great shade tree. Now they come in both male and female. And you'll recognize the males from the females because the females will have berries, like over here. And the males do not have berries. All right, now I'm on San Miguel. I want to show you uh, two more of these Chinese pistache trees as I cross the street. We're by our second uh, tea box on the north course. Now these here are females. Now, you know it's a female because it has berries. And it's also very sparse looking when compared to the males. And that's because all the energy for the plant has been going to the berries instead of the leaves. So if you plant this at home and you just want a pretty tree without berries, Make sure you get the males. You'll get a much more full tree. So the berries up here, actually I'll take a look up here on the hill where it's a lot safer. Here's the bark. You know, it's patterned a little horizontally, a little crunchy and cracked, but it's uh, pretty cool. It's not a smooth bark. 
But up here, now here we have the berries. Now the green berries, like this uh, green guy here, okay? Now he's not ripe yet, but the red or the pink berries, they're ripening. And if you're lucky enough, you'll find a blackberry. Now this guy doesn't have any blackberries, but if you find a black one, that means the flowers were fertilized. So blackberries have been fertilized. Now these berries here, they're not made for human consumption, but the birds love them when they ripen and you'll get American robins, cedar waxlings, Thanapeplas, western bluebirds, and even bush tits go nuts for our Chinese pistache. All right. Wow. Yeah, so look how sparse this tree is from behind as well. And that's a female. So on Olympic Way, all of these trees here at the entrance, they're all Chinese pistache trees. This one here is a female. You can tell by the berries. There's a load of berries right here. Holy moly. Here's a male. It's very full and no berries. Here, of course, is a male. Across the street, we've got one that's uh, turning our gold yellow leaves. And on the end here, take a look at this one. This guy, our girl, is absolutely loaded with berries. Holy smokes. Now we have one of our Chinese pistache trees here. It's not doing that great. So people ask me, um, hey, what's going on with my Chinese pistache? And there might be a couple reasons. Might be uh, poor nutrition, stress, insufficient water, some type of disease but it's most likely, I think it's caused by a fungus. So let's take a closer look. So our tree here, he's uh, not looking very good. And I think the cause is verticillium rot. Now verticillium, it's a fungus and it grows down here. If you overwater too much, it grows in the soil. Then it gets absorbed in the roots and the roots, um, take it up through the vascular system or the xylem and it carries it up the branches out here all the leaves die off carries it out here as well to the berries and the berries um, you know they're pretty dried up and wilted as well you know, so that's too bad. So can this tree be saved? Well, probably not because of fungus. It gets into the trunk and the branches and it's internal. So you can't treat it with a fungicide. It's already uh, got the cancer of that verticillium. So we got to rip up this tree and treat all the soil with the fungicide, kill all the bad stuff, and replant the tree. Change our watering habits so we don't give it too much water. The neighboring tree here, although he looks a little healthy, see you got these uh, berries drying up too fast. We also hear leaves here see how they're starting to wilt and die off and brown on the ends here that's not a good sign it should still be turning you know yellow then red and then falling so these guys look like they're also rotting and maybe this tree could be saved or not i don't know all right so take care of your uh chinese pistache trees and um Remember, just uh, don't overwater because you might get this um, fungus rot, all right?
Now we have a few more in Hillsboro. This is on Torrey Pines. Look at that radiant color, fantastic. And over here, here we have a female. She's got a lot of berries on her. Wow. Now we have a few more up here on San Miguel. Absolutely beautiful radiant colors, my goodness. And um, up here, along the sidewalk, we have a few more. On Vista del Verde, we have a few more here. This one's really showing its colors. And all these trees up here on Vista del Verde and Hillsboro, this is October. And all the ones with this uh, foliage and this beautiful color, they're all Chinese pistachio trees. And across the street, over here, we have our final Chinese pistachio for you. And this one here is quite young, but it's got this great foliage. Green leaves, yellow leaves, pinkish leaves, and red leaves. Now this is a female. You can see the, uh, the berries right up here. Now these, when they're young, they're called an ugly duckling because they're a little lanky and spindly and they need stakes to keep them upright for the first year or so because they will uh, fall down but they will eventually bloom into our very beautiful canopy shade Chinese pistache. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video and please have a great day. Thanks, bye.